Hi, this is Jeff West with Oracle, and today I'd like to give you an overview and a demo of a high availability feature for JMS in WebLogic called Store and Forward. Store and Forward is a feature that allows interoperability between two WebLogic domains where messages can be forwarded from one domain to the other. Messages are stored locally on the source domain before they're sent to the remote domain, which allows uh, a high availability when the remote server is not available. So when messages come into the local server, they're stored and sent to the remote server when that server is available. It's similar in concept to the messaging bridge feature in previous WebLogic versions, um, but it is faster and more scalable. So, um, in order to use the store and forward uh, feature, it should be between two WebLogic domains. It can be between two standalone servers, between two server instances in a cluster, or across two clusters within a domain, or across separate domains. Store and forward is not for interoperating with previous versions of WebLogic older than uh, 9x. And also, it does not work when you want to send messages from WebLogic to Glassfish or MQ series or vice versa. So I wanted to describe some of the configuration elements for store and forward. First is the persistent JMS store. You can choose either a JDBC store or a file store but a JDBC store gives you more of a highly available infrastructure and it makes it easier to migrate messages from one server to another. In addition, there is a store and forward remote context which defines the URL that will be used to connect to send messages. Uh, for this URL, you can use a cluster T3 URL or address so you can send to a distributed destination on the remote server or uh, cluster. There's also the store and forward and error handling, which defines the policy or the actions to take when the store and forward service fails to forward a message to the remote destination. Um, you can redirect it or log it or ignore it, um, although we wouldn't advise you to ignore it. For Then finally, we have the uh, store and forward imported destination, which, is, which defines the remote destination that's been imported. You can prefix the JNDI name with a unique uh, string such as SAF for store and forward, and I'll show you how to do that later in the, uh, in the demo. Um, and then finally, there's the store and forward agent, which is the process that's responsible for sending messages to the remote destination. Um, here you can set settings that control how the messages are sent to the remote domain. So I wanted to describe some of the elements that I'm using for this demo. Um, first, there's a simple Java JMS uh, producer client, which I'm going to run from the command line. This producer will send messages to a distributed queue uh, that is targeted to the cluster. Uh, the cluster name is the AppGrade cluster. And um, I have an MDB also targeted to the cluster, which will take the messages off of the local queue display a log message, and then put them on the store and forward imported queue. I'm just doing this for the demo purposes. It's not required to have this type of architecture when you are using store and forward, um, but as you'll see in the demo, it will show how messages arrive on the local domain and then are sent to the remote domain. And then finally, on the remote domain, I have a message driven bean, which takes messages off of the remote queue and displays a message on the screen. So in the demo, I'll show you how messages that are sent to a destination that's not available are stored locally. And then when that remote, remote destination is available, the messages will be delivered. And also for the demo, we'll be sending messages to a remote uh, destination that is a distributed destination. Next, I'd like to walk you through the configuration uh, that we'll be using. 
here I have a cluster that has two managed servers and each of those managed servers has a JMS server. So uh, now I'll walk you through the JMS module that I have configured for Swarm Forward. Um, I've got a connection factory and a queue on the local server, and that's where the MDB will be listening to before it forwards. Um, here is the remote context, and you can see that you can specify a cluster T3 address so you can send to uh, remote destinations that are distributed destinations. Next, here, here's the configuration that we'll be using for the error handling. Um, the, here we're just going to leave it the default to be logging the messages and not redirecting them. Next, we'll take a look at the importer destinations. Here you can see you can specify a JNDI prefix and the remote context and error handling to use for the store and forward. You can import both queues and topics. Here I've imported a queue and you specify the remote JNDI name there. Let's take a quick look at the JNDI tree uh, to see what it looks like with the prefix. So here we have the SAF prefix and here's the full path to the domain or to the imported queue. We'll see here uh, that it's the importer and store and forward queue. So also you can uh, override the JNDI name. Uh, take the opportunity to say WebLogic is awesome and use that for the JNDI name. So we'll activate those changes and then take a look at the JNDI tree and we'll see that the new name for the queue is there. And there it is, WebLogic is awesome. And there it is again, the imported store and forward queue. Let's back that out um, before we go. So for non-persistent messages, you can have different levels, uh, qualities of service, um, but it's advisable to make most of the messages uh, persistent. So next, next let's take a look at the store and forward agent. Um, this is, the, again, the process that actually takes the messages and delivers them on the remote destination. Here you set the persistent store and the agent type. Uh, the agent type is for, um, it's either sending or receiving or both. Uh, the receiving portion is only applicable for the uh, WSRM, the Web Services Reliable Messaging, um, and we're not going to be using that for this demo. So on the agent, you can set uh, retry um, parameters and windowing intervals for um, how long it waits before sending a batch of messages over to the next, uh, over to the remote domain. However, for distributed destinations, this isn't, uh, this is ignored. So you can also monitor, uh, use the WebLogic admin console to monitor the um, settings or the messages and metrics that are going through the, the server. So let's go ahead and get started with a demo. Um, first, I'm going to send messages to the app grid domain, the local domain um, for this example. And we'll see that the log message is being displayed as the messages are being consumed. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I have a one second delay before the message, before the next message is consumed. That way we can see the messages flow from one side to the other. So let's um, log back into the uh, admin console and take a look at the store forward agent and see what we can monitor there. So here we can see that by adding metrics, adding all the columns to this table, we can see things like um, whether or not consumption and forwarding is paused, we can see the total bytes are in the queue and the total messages that are in the queue. So uh, what I'm going to do now is go over to the SAF domain, which is, for this example, the remote domain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start one of the, the first managed server. And what we'll see here is as the managed server one reaches a running state, 
that the messages will be delivered and we'll see a log message on the screen. Okay, so now the server's up and running and we'll, we're seeing the messages being delivered um, on the remote destination. So I'm going to go ahead and send uh, 10 more messages and we'll see them flow uh, first on the left and then on the right. So now we see the messages being delivered in the remote uh, domain on the remote server. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the second managed server for the app grid uh, cluster. And we'll see that, so in this case, I am sending messages to a distributed destination from my client then those messages are going to be delivered or forwarded from both of the local managed servers um, to the single remote destination. So now we can see that the messages are being load balanced across the two uh, managed servers on the left side with the even numbers down at the bottom and uh, odd numbers at the top, but all the messages are being delivered over to the single uh, server in the remote domain. So um, next I'm going to go ahead and start the second managed server in the remote domain. So in the remote domain I have a single distributed queue uh, with most of the default settings. And then once this the second manager server is up and running, um, I'll go ahead and send some more messages, um, and we'll see them um, go between the two manager servers on the left to the two manager servers on the right. So here we go and send ten more messages, and now we see them uh, going from the left side to the right side. So uh, let's go back and look at the metrics for the store and forward agent. Here we'll see that the, the total number of bytes received, which corresponds to the bytes forwarded and the messages forwarded is, uh, can be displayed here. So hopefully you found this demo and overview informative and helpful. Uh, if you like what you see or have a request for a feature that you'd like to see, uh, please let us know. You can leave a comment on the Oracle WebLogic YouTube channel or send us a direct message to Oracle WebLogic or tweet a message using hashtag WebLogic and we'll be listening. Thanks.